Hey, what is up guys? Klaus next here and welcome to episode 6 of the KX podcast. Today we're going to be talking about strength, what strength is and what real strength is. You know, not what it appears to be, what actual true strength is. And we're going to break this down into the physical and the functional. So I want to get this out of the way that there are other realms of strength. And I, I firmly believe, and you've seen this on my YouTube channel, that strength is broken down into physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. That's just my understanding of it and, and how I've pursued my knowledge of strength. So it is just as important to be emotionally strong and mentally strong and spiritually strong. But for the sake of this podcast, we're just going to talk about physical. There's enough to talk about with your physiology to, to just narrow it down to one of those categories. So let's start with physical strength. So just physiologically in your body, that kind of strength. So strength starts in the nervous system. So the nervous system, you know, you've got nerves that run through your whole body. They start in your brain. They run down into your fingers and into your toes and through your muscles. And your nervous system is, is, the, is the start point of your strength, literally the roots of your strength. And the nervous system learns strength through experience. So the, you may have experienced this the first time you go to the gym, the first time you're on a machine, or like the first time you're under a barbell. You're lying on the bench, you're looking at the bar in the face, or you're about to do your first bench press. And you've seen people lifting in the gym, like, you know, stacking those plates on. You're excited to see how strong you are. And you pick the bar up just to get warmed up, and that bar is enough. That bar is enough weight. You feel it coming down and pushing up, and like, man, like, this is, like, this is supposed to be the easy part. I'm struggling with the bar. What's wrong with me? Am I actually this weak? And to put your mind at ease, it's not that you're that weak. It's that your nervous system doesn't know how to do what you're doing it. So the nervous system must learn first, the motions. It, it has to, just like when you, you learn anything at a new job or a new skill, you have to like see how it's done first. Then you're, you have to process that in your head and then you have to learn how to do it in your body. So it, it takes kind of that understanding first. So the first time you move that barbell, okay, you're, you're on the bench, you're moving that bar and it's really hard. Your nervous system is learning how to do the motion first, okay? Your strength isn't even important. It has to know what to do. After you've learned what to do, you can begin to practice it. So the first time's the worst because you don't know how to do it. And you're learning how to do it and it's rough. And your form is kind of shaky. And form is really important because if the nervous system learns how to do something wrong the first few times, and then you start practicing it the wrong way, and you start adding plates to the bar, and you keep progressing in this way, your nervous system only learned the wrong way. So sometimes you see a lot of people struggling in the gym because they didn't give their nervous system a chance to adapt and learn the form and understand how it's done before they started adding a lot of weight. So it's really important and critical that you take the time to learn the form so that you don't have to start all over again. I've had to do this with my uh, bench. I've had to do that with my bench twice. I've had to do it with my squat once where I take all the plates off and I start over again. So in, in more of a, a physiological answer, your brain sends these neural signals into your muscles. Your, mus your muscles are made up of all these little fibers, right? You've probably seen like those pictures in anatomy. It looks like a bunch of strings, right? They're made up of these fibers. And in order for your muscles to contract and do something, they have to recruit the fibers, right? That's the neural signals that your brain sends down into them. So when you're learning how to do it, your brain doesn't, you know, it doesn't recruit a lot of these muscle fibers, these motor units, right? They have to recruit. And I, I talk about this in my muscle tone video. You should go check that out. But the first time you do something, they don't recruit a whole lot of muscle fibers. So over time, part of the process of getting strong is learning how to recruit. Well, you don't have to, you don't have to think about it, but your muscles do. And your nervous system does. And your nervous system working together with your muscles have to learn over time how to recruit muscle fibers. So the first time you bench press, you're not recruiting a whole lot of muscle fibers, but as you get stronger, you begin to recruit more and more and more. And that's gonna make the difference in how strong your muscle contraction is, allowing you to move more weight. So this is the foundation of strength, your nervous system. When you go into anything strength related, you, you are stronger often than you think. Your body just has to catch up first. Your body has to catch up. So you have to learn first and then it can catch up. So you try anything the first time, you kind of suck at it. It's not because you're maybe always necessarily out of shape or not strong. You just don't know how to do it and you're not, you're, you're not choreographed in your head and you're not completely understanding how to do it. So learning is first. 
And that is the, the true foundation of strength. Okay, so I think that everybody should have a foundation of strength um, in all different areas of motion and movement before they start adding weight. So that's why I'm such a, f a firm advocate for not paying for a gym membership until you can do push-ups at home or squats at home because that's going to be really good for your nervous system and, and building a foundation of strength. And the truth is about strength is that there, there is no correlation between strength and size. Okay, how big your muscles are don't make you strong. So if you see big bodybuilders, they can get that big off of 10 pound dumbbells. Okay, there's no correlation. But size does help. Okay, if you are, um, if you do have that foundation and you have big muscles, then that helps because the bigger a muscle is, the more potential it has to be strong. So they, they do kind of go hand in hand, but you don't need to have one and the other. If you see somebody who's not as built, Sometimes they're the strongest ones in the gym. I've seen videos of guys that are half the size of me deadlifting, you know, double what I can. Because that's strength starts in the nervous system and then your body will adapt. You know, your appearance and your aesthetics, they'll adapt to whatever loads you're putting to your body. So you don't necessarily have to think about it. A popular ana analogy in the um, health and, and fitness world is attaching cannons to canoes. If you look at a, the human body, the canoe is kind of like your bones, okay? And the cannon is like your muscle. If, if you put all these cannons, all these big muscles on a weak structure, on a weak skeleton, it doesn't mean that you're strong. It means that you have cannons on your canoe. It's not gonna, they're not gonna do much for you because you don't have a, the big built ship to support the firepower. So that's the end of that weird analogy. Let's move on to the next subject here. So let's talk for a second about hypertrophy and hyperplasia because that's something that you're probably going to want to know if you're getting into any kind of muscle building or strength building. So hypertrophy is the term that you may have heard the most and that is um, a, a big contributor to muscle building because that is the, the act of the muscles gaining size, okay, increasing in size. The muscle fibers are getting bigger, okay, and that's ideally people who want to get bigger, they want to get buff, they want hypertrophy. Then on the other end of it, we have hyperplasia, which is not increasing the size of the muscle fibers, but increasing the amount of muscle fibers and how dense they are. So hyperplasia refers to the amount of muscle fibers. So the analogy that I like to make and the way that I've understood it is that you have hypertrophy where things get bigger, they swell up. This is kind of like pool noodles, okay? You know, they're, they're soft, they're squishy, they're fun to play with in the pool. They're big, they're swollen. And then you have hyperplasia. And now you imagine like metal cords that would like support a bridge. Okay, the metal cords are smaller, but there's more of them. Okay, if you ever looked at like those big supporting beams, they're like metal and there's just like a thousand of those little guys all working together and that makes them tight and tough and strong. And then you match that up against the pool noodle, right? Hypertrophy, and it, it's big, it's soft, it looks really good, but it, it looks bigger than the metal cords, but it's not... It's, it's not as strong, it just, it's not, it doesn't have the amount and the density, it just doesn't compare. So, whichever direction you decide to go in the gym, looking big, or lifting big, you know, it's, it's, it's up to you, it's not that one is necessarily better, it's just, this podcast is about strength, so if we're looking at this from a strength perspective and you want to get stronger, it's ideal that you go the route of, I guess, combination. You want big muscles, but you also want tough muscles and you want to have that strength and the size because with the size comes the potential and just to wrap up physical strength strength is, is beyond just you know how much you can lift in the gym or how strong your muscles are there's also the importance of having strong joints strong bones just overall being healthy having a strong immune system those are all things that you can work on through you know a variety of, of different um, practices so that's the first category of strength. Let's go into the second category of strength and the way that I've categorized this. Let's go into functional strength. Now, functional strength is like practical strength. It's, it's real life strength. So it's strength that you use every day. So if you go into a gym and you go to like one of those pin based machines and you put the pin to hundred pounds and you just, you're killing it on that machine. You're doing super good. That doesn't necessarily make you strong outside of the machine and it just makes you really good at that machine. In that particular setting, when you're sitting down and your joints are moving at that angle, you are strong. It doesn't necessarily transfer into real life. And that is the difference between lifting for 
strength and functional strength. So to be strength in a functional sense is that you're getting stronger in the gym and it's helping you outside in, re in, in the real world. And that's kind of why I have fallen in love with the, the principle of strongman training. Strongman training is, you've probably seen those huge dudes on TV, they're like pulling planes and throwing logs and stuff like that. I fell in love with that style of training and I've changed my training style to kind of suit that because I see the practicality in that. You know, there's some big guy in the gym who looks super good and you're kind of envious of the way he looks and he probably has an easier time picking up chicks than you do. But I'd rather be the guy that you call when you need to move, you know, or you need some help getting something done. That's that kind of functional strength. You don't need to be in the perfect environment. Hey, you need help moving that piano? Yeah, I can help you out. That's real functional strength. And I think everyone should train for this in some degree because everyone should have good grip strength. If you're carrying grocery bags or you're carrying some wood at your job or you're carrying like anything, you know, grip is really important. And it's, you know, it can prevent you from falling off of things, holding onto a railing. You know, if you're in a, a scary situation or a dangerous situation, you need to hold on to something or, you know, like a tree fell on your child and you need to pick up the tree. Grip is really important. And, you know, just having that low back, core strength, a strong leg drive that will help you specifically for like emergency situations or like in Canada, we got lots of snow, right? So a lot of times you probably, or you know somebody, or you have helped someone whose car ended up in a ditch and you need to push that car out or, you know, in situations like that, that functional strength really comes in handy more than your ability to do a lateral delt fly on the delt fly machine or even with dumbbells, right? So it's kind of, and that depends on just how you train, okay? What machines you pick and what activities you choose to do. And you want to kind of line that up with the things that you do every day. So why is an overhead press important? Well, because it can help you put something heavy on the top shelf or pull it off the top shelf without it falling onto your head. Or if you need to pick something up off the ground and put it on the shelf, you know? There's nothing better than the deadlift for that because... I just made a video on this. It's called, if I was to pick one exercise to do for the rest of my life, it would be deadlifts because they're the most functional full body exercise out there. It utilizes all your muscles and it helps you do what humans have always done. You know, what we've evolved to do is, is to harvest, to pick things up off the ground and carry them around. Functional training is not just doing... Uh, a thousand different dumbbell exercises in the gym, it, it should also be replicating carrying things, right? That's very much the strongman um, style of training. So take a look at your life and think, what movements do I do the most in my life? You know, not everyone has a super physical life. What do you do the most? You know, you should, your training should enhance your life. It shouldn't be this, this, this other part of your life, you go there and then you leave and it doesn't help you. It should enhance you because we work out to make ourselves healthier and to make ourselves fit and to make, you know, for a lot of us to make ourselves look better. But what should be the most important is enhancing our life, making things easier for us. When you have to pick something up heavy, it's not as heavy because you've been going to the gym. Uh, I mean, it, it can be as simple as like screwing in a light bulb or like a lot of people work construction or people who do plumbing or whatever, they do a lot of twisting or like turning things like overhead, you know, you got to consider your rotator cuff, you got to consider the grip, and you got to consider what that looks like to have overuse injuries, to do the same thing over and over again. How can you balance that out going to the gym, doing the opposite motion, or like practicing that in the gym in some kind of functional way that it helps you with your job or your career, whatever it is, right? You want to enhance your life and make your body better and stronger, but you also want to prevent injuries from happening inevitable injuries, overuse injuries, because we all ideally would like to live a long life. A lot of things can happen. And we do a lot of the same things every day. You know, that overuse, same thing. So it's good to have that, even that just like good core strength. You know, if you're going to have anything, to have a good core strength, because it's going to help you with balance and stability as you get older and you become, you know, you start to lose your balance, you become a senior. And like, again, living in Canada, we have to deal with ice. We have to walk around on ice a lot because it's it snows and it gets warm and then it gets cold again and things freeze. And, you know, walking on ice, you realize, like, 
your muscles are firing all over the place trying to keep you upright. And, you know, that can even just prevent you from slipping on ice or like you're going to slip and then how fast it takes for your body to respond and catch you. You know, that's, that's like speed and reaction time. That's good functional things to have. And you can train that in the gym. You can improve that. So when you come across these situations in real life where you find yourself in a pinch and you might be in a serious situation had you not prepared for it. That's what training your, your strength in your body in the functional sense can be, can mean for you. So how can we train functionally? Full body movements are always the best. Doing a lot of like compound exercises are things that use a lot of different joints and work in a variety of planes. I'm not sure if you've heard of planes before. There's the transversal, the sagittal, the frontal planes. They're just basically um, the way we move, whether we twist whether we move forward, backwards, sideways, training in all the different planes, not just standing in one place, because you could do a full body workout just standing in one place, not even having to move your feet around. So remember to move in other directions. Lunge backwards, not just forwards. Lunge to the side. Lunge at an angle. You know, work in all the different planes. That's very much what athletes have to do. And especially, I mean, being a football player, and you're on the field, anything can happen at any time. You don't know which way the running back's going to go, or you don't know if you're going to get cranked by somebody who's leading a block for the running back. And you've got to be able to move in all different kinds of directions. You've got to prepare yourself for everything. Football very much prepared me for, um, you know, having these skills to transfer into life, being fit and physically ready in all these different planes of motion. So if you're in the gym, do things that challenge you in all these different directions. Do lots of twisting. You know, people often don't work their obliques enough as it is. And maybe that is what it means to be uh, fit. You know, our society has this idea of what fitness is. You know, I've been in kinesiology classes where the first question the professor asks is, what is fitness? And everyone kind of scratches their heads because we all like have this idea of what fitness is. But, you know, there's no one, there's no like clear definition really. There's just this definition that we kind of all accept and that changes over time. So I think it, fitness is enhancing your body, being ready for these situations, preventing injury, and being able to um, push yourself beyond what your limit would be without it. You know, that's kind of my slogan, discovering your potential. So in order to have functional strength, we have to go back to our roots, okay? In the society that I've grown up in, we don't have to train. We don't have to go to the gym. You know, a lot of our life is being made easier by technology, and we don't have to necessarily be prepared for war anymore like we had to. We never, ha like, living in the city, like, I don't have to carry hay bales or, or do, like, a lot of shoveling or, like, you know, every day nailing in fence posts, stuff like that, like that strength isn't asked of me and it's not asked of most people. My society has it easy. I live in North America. So again, all my opinions are, are biased to North America. I've been to, I spent a lot of time in Central America over the past couple of years and I see what they have it like and it's very much real functional out there. They don't, they ha their lives haven't been made easier by technology, but ours have. So we're going to have to kind of go back to our roots. Remember what we had to do as a society to survive. And those people, they didn't have to train. They were just strong. They were functionally strong. They could carry things. They had good grip. That's um, something that I, I'm really scared our society is going to lose over time. And unless another war hits us in the next few years and we don't have to be physically ready, we're going to be, it's going to be up to us to hold ourselves responsible and hold ourselves accountable to being strong and functionally strong for when the time comes. So that's, you know, functional strength is preventing injury, but also just being strong enough to do the things you have to do in life and to do them easier, right? As our society gets more sedentary over time, it's more important than ever to give ourselves these healthy bodies that we will always need. We've needed them in the past when things were hard, We've needed them just before our time when things were kind of getting easier. We need them now. We're going to need them in the future. That is something that is always going to be a necessity for us. And that is to have bodies that are healthy and bodies that are strong and that are ready for anything. And it's going to be necessary in the future too. Even when things get even easier and easier, it's always going to be important to be strong. And this is where I'm going to end the podcast, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you. And uh, stay tuned for the next podcast. As usual, 
If you have any ideas as to something that you think the health and fitness industry doesn't talk about enough or things that deserve more light, feel free to leave a comment below or message me. I'm going through a list of podcasts, but I would be happy to touch on something and do a bit of research into another subject. Thanks for listening. Klaus next out.